latest race problems, no matter what they are, you want to write an equation that you know you're going to take the derivative of. Hey, you have a problem? God, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm well aware. So you, you want to write an equation that relates the things that you know about, that you actually have values for, and the things that they want you to find the values of. You want to find how can you relate the, the thing that they want to naturally, they're going to want to know the rate of change of something. Okay, so how can you relate that thing when it's not changing, when it's stationary, when it's, when it's still, to other stuff that you also know about uh, in order to take the derivative? So let's, let's see, this, I think, if you've read this problem at all, clearly all of these distances, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, are involved. This one? No, not so much. The length of the light beam from the, the lamppost? No, that's, that they, they don't care about that. They're not asking about that. So it's not relevant. Okay? Oh. But what we call them, how we label them, which ones we plug into an equation, that's all very important. Okay? And how we plug it in. Oh, I have a question. Yeah. Is this question going to go on this way? Yeah. How are we going to get directions back? I'm going to create as fast as possible and get them back to you so you can get them. Can we get our quizzes back? I'm working on them all after by the end of class. Sweet. Those of you who have questions. Let's do this for all of them. I'm just kind of like, kind of busy right now. <laughs> Care less about it. So, yeah. I know Pretty sassy thing, right? I found out last year that I guess I don't have full say about that. Hopefully, Hopefully not what? What? Hopefully not what? Can we do the problem? About Let's about go. Where okay, one thing is going to one quarter. Okay, here we go. So what do they tell us? Let's run down that real quick. They tell us that uh, six, let's see, what the man was uh, six, six feet tall, is walking at a rate of six feet per second. So he, this guy, is walking, okay, at a rate of six feet per second. So we could look at that as this distance is changing, right? Mm -hmm. With, with uh, this as a reference point. So let's just call it x, okay? So something is six feet per second. What's six feet per second? Very good. Dx dt is 6 feet per second. Okay, that's good. That's some information. Um, Wait, if we want to label that the second one should have been, like if we labeled it f, would it be dx dt? It would. Um, let's see, 6 feet per second, what is that? 16 feet above the ground, we'll label that. When he's 10 feet away from the base of the light, find the following. Okay, now be careful about. That, that at some point, we might want to incorporate 10 feet, but not before we take the derivative, okay? If we, because if we plug that in before we take the derivative, then x will not be able to change. If you take the derivative, there'll be no x to take the derivative of, and x won't change, mm -hmm. okay? So we, uh, we know stuff about how fast this is changing. We know how far away he is from the light. What we want to know is, uh, let's see, find the following. The rate the tip of the shadow is moving. So here's the tip of the shadow. He's casting a shadow on the ground. How fast is this moving? Which is different from how fast is it growing or getting bigger. But how fast is it moving away from the light? Just like he, we're measuring how fast he's moving away from the light, right? So if you were walking along on the tip of a shadow, how long would you be walking if you were keeping up with that tip of the shadow? Okay. So what distance? What measurement does that have anything to do with? Theta. What's that? Theta. Theta? Yeah. Not at all. I mean, we could draw a relationship between that angle, but is it? It didn't say anything about an angle, right? Yeah. Did it say anything about an angle? No. If you bring in the angle, I mean, if you have to. Sure, but if they don't give you any information about the angle, they're not asking you how much is changing, they're not telling you how big it is, nothing is mentioned about the angle. So it's really unlikely that that's going to be helpful. Does that make sense? Yeah. So just be careful about bringing stuff in, just because you can. If it doesn't have anything to do with what they're asking or what they've given you, then you're probably just going to overcomplicate the problem. So try and stick to the stuff they tell you about and the stuff they ask you about. Okay? Um, so, 
they want to know how fast the tip of the shadow is moving, so we want to translate that to like a length that's changing. Okay. So which length is, is changing if we're talking about the rate that the tip of the shadow is moving? X. X? X is how fast he's moving. Okay, well, let's, let's call it T. T is for time. Let's leave T alone. L. L, okay, and which one is that? This, this one? The squiggly line. The squiggly line, this one? Okay, the length of the shadow. It's saying how fast is the tip of the shadow moving. If I put a little bouncing green arrow pointing down at the tip of the shadow, if we're measuring this distance here, we're, we're like, the, the length of the shadow, how fast that's increasing would be like, how fast it's moving from his perspective. Like how, just how fast it's moving away from him. But it's asking how fast is the tip of the shadow moving in general to an outside observer. From our perspective, looking at this, how fast is it moving? No, it would not be DLDT because six feet per second. What about six feet per second? Isn't that how fast the shadow's moving too? It's just how fast X is moving. No, no because there's you got the stationary light source, you got him moving. When he gets out here, if the shadow, if the tip of the shadow is moving at the same rate, then this length has to be the same, right? Oh, so like he's the holding length. a pole out in front of him, it doesn't change his length. But it, the shadow's growing. It's going to get bigger the farther he gets away. That's right. But Fair. it's not the same. No, this this represents just the light beam that is, uh, you know, I don't know, ca casting the shadow. As he moves out here, there's, there's light coming off at, at every angle. And so there will be light there to cast shadows as well. Isn't there a property that allows like, the time of light to be? There would be, but we don't even know what we're talking, like which lengths we're talking about yet. Like which ones are relevant. If you're trying to relate things, you don't even know what you're talking about quite yet. We're talking about the length of the shadow, and I'm trying to get you to see it's not the length of the shadow that we're interested in right now. It's saying how fast is the tip of the shadow moving from our perspective, just looking at this guy walking. This tip of the shadow, if there's just like this bouncing green arrow moving along as this tip of the shadow is moving, how fast is that little bouncing green arrow moving, right? That's different from how, how fast this is growing, right? Because that would actually be a, bit, a little bit slower because it's growing, and it's like he's carrying his shadow with him. It's like if you're walking along and you throw a baseball, right? You only threw the baseball so fast, but it also gets your momentum that you already have as you're walking. Does that make sense? It gets its velocity that you give it plus the velocity that you're walking. Okay, so that's what the tip of the shadow is like. He's causing it by by moving. He's causing it to grow because it's getting farther away from the light source, and the, the light has to shine at this really shallow angle cast a shadow as he gets farther away, making the shadow longer. Um, but he's also walking it so that the shadow's moving along. So is it L we're interested in? No. 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 We can call that L, but it's not relevant yet, so let's not even name it. Okay. Which distance are we concerned about? Higher or lower or from higher to lower? Are they changing? That's all we're asking about right now, okay? So what distance is changing when we're talking about how fast the tip of the shadow is moving? The hypotenuse is a smaller triangle. What's that? The hypotenuse is a smaller triangle. This? Yeah. It gets longer as it moves farther away. It does get longer. But is this a measure? If I measured how fast this was changing, would that be measuring how fast this was moving? This is moving along a horizontal. Would it be the whole, like, from where it looks to the tip of the shadow? It would. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm a little concerned that it, it's that difficult to understand. I mean, how fast is the shadow moving? There's this, there's the tip of the shadow. It's like, it's a thing. It's like an object that we could talk about. It's the tip of the shadow. How fast is it moving? If I say, how fast is he moving? No problem, right? The person is moving, walking. How fast is he walking? Well, I just need to figure out how fast he's moving away from some fixed point. Okay. 
talking about the tip of the shadow, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss as to why it's so difficult to, to rein in. Okay. It's, if we're asking how fast is something moving, then we're saying, well, we're just clocking its, its, uh, its rate of change, how fast it's moving away from some reference point, right? some, sta some stationary reference point. So if we're using this moving reference point, we might think it's all off. So he's moving, that would mean the distance from the lamppost is changing. This is moving, that would mean the distance from the lamppost is changing. Right? So this is getting at the end of, at the end of his shadow, it's moving away. Before you say I don't know, or I'm so lost, or just start guessing, uh, you know, because when you're by yourself and you're, you're doing problems like this, just take a breath, read it, think about what it's saying, think about what it's asking. When it says how fast something's moving, tell, ask yourself what does that mean to me, uh, especially in terms of like a, a distance. So even a little diagram that I might draw. Which distance is changing when I'm talking about how fast something is moving? It says the shadow is moving. We want to um, relate that back to this distance. This distance is the one that's changing when we're talking about how fast this is moving. Okay, so now they've not mentioned this at all, so we don't want to mess with it unless they ask, right? So they're, they're mentioning this guy, they're mentioning this guy, they've given us these measurements that aren't changing. He's not growing any or shrinking any, he's staying well, assume six feet. Uh, the whole time, and lamp post isn't changing heights. Um, okay, so that's all the information we have. We don't want to bring in too much, and we don't want to leave anything out uh, if it's useful, I guess. So now, we, w we would like to, since we do know something about how fast this is changing, we also know how far away he is from the lamp post. We just want to find some way to relate this thing to that thing, probably using these distances since they are known, and they don't change. In the scenario, in the, in the problem, are not changing. Okay. So now we do have um, uh, yeah, some, some things that, that we can relate. So how will we relate this distance L to this distance? saying add that to x? No. So if you find that, then you uh -huh. add it to x. Okay. No. Add, add. Okay, ratios. Which ratios and why? Why are you mentioning ratios to start with? Because we want to find, so we have this smaller one. Might as well just make another triangle, but just make it say 10 up 6, and then you have Oh, okay. Like five, six, ten, and then you have the hypotenuse, and then you could do like the um, 16 over 6, and then 10 or no, 10 L over 10. Is that right? Hmm. That's an interesting one. I don't think I've ever uh, seen that one projected. So you're, you're saying maybe we can move this up here? Yeah, would that still be the same triangle? Just um, what do you mean, same triangle? Like it would be like well, obvious the smaller. Triangle. Same as the bigger one? Yeah. So we call those the similar triangles? Yeah, are they similar? Are they the same when they're like the same? Same as what? Like the two triangles are similar yeah. to the Borat one or to that? To, to this one? Or to this one? To this one. Yeah. This, this one. So okay, so. The big one is similar to this one. It's also similar to this one. Yeah, so then the top part would be 10. And then Why is that? Because, so it moved up 16. 6. So you got to move it up 6 to get to here. Yeah, so that'd be 10 well, it's six and 10. So it's basically 16, so 45 would be a move. So it's 45. Yeah. If you move the 10 up to the top of 6, yeah. so that 3 by 1 is, you get 10 left over 10 over 8. That means it's a 45. So it's a, Right, but as soon as you make this one 10, 
then you stopped him from moving. You see what I'm saying? You're, you have stopped the man from walking. No, I understand what you're saying. If you, um, I understand you're saying if this is 10, this is 10, and this is 45, this is 45, this is 90. No, I'm not saying that. I'm okay. saying that L minus S would be 6. Because it's a 45 degree angle, so that would mean L minus 6 would have to be 6, but that would be 16. That's just the same as saying this is 45. But you're using these, you're stopping it. You're stopping the whole thing. Nothing's changing. <laughs> When you say that this is 10, nothing can change after that. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. But he needs to be able to move. He needs to be able to walk. Yes. If you call this 10, then it's just 10. Nothing else can be, like, he can't walk. This tip, the shadow won't be moving because that's only 10. Because when he starts walking, then it'll be, at some point, this will be 11, then it'll be 12, then it'll be 13. It's changing, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't want to say, like, label all these, these things until they're relevant. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Um, okay. So now we have this this triangle here. This distance is also we could call x. Um, and things that are changing, we need to <coughs> leave them as variables. Let's just say leave them as variables before we take the derivative. Okay. If you did nothing else, but just remember that rule. Remember that rule. Don't change. Like leave variables as variables if they are things that are changing. Until you take the derivative. Okay. Um, okay, so we have similar triangles. A similar triangle here, this vertical side 10, and that vertical side will stay 10 the whole time, right? Because it's just a straight <coughs> shot from that point to the top of his head, which will stay the same height the whole time as well. So that does stay 10 the whole time. This is going to change, um, but we do have a triangle that this vertical height is, uh, is 10. This is x. We have this big old triangle here. Uh, where the, the, the base is L and the vertical side is 16. Okay, so similar triangle is useful, and so what are we gonna do with that now? We, I think we've just kind of already been talked about, but we totally established that there's two similar triangles. So we're talking about this one and the big one. We could use this one too, but I like the idea of using this one. I didn't even already suggest it. So how would we redefine this? Derivative of the triangle? Derivative of the triangle? Well, we, it's not in an equation yet. We can't take the derivative of oh, anything by What's that? Okay, that's, that's not a bad idea. It's only that <coughs> this distance here, it, it wasn't brought up by the problem. It wasn't given. It, there's no questions asked, right? What I'm saying, though, is that this distance, this whole, this hypotenuse yeah. in the problem is a measure of how long like a beam of light is. Yeah. It says not anything that they asked about. They didn't ask anything about how long a length of light was. Right? The hypotenuse is just completely irrelevant to the problem. We can use the Pythagorean theorem, like it's a natural instinct because we have this right triangle, but then we think about it and it's, well, that hypotenuse has nothing to do with our problem. We'd be bringing in extra information that ultimately becomes irrelevant because we don't care about it. Okay? Um, I mean, we 10 over x can't be the distance over the side. Right, so corresponding parts, corresponding ratios uh, of, of similar triangles should be equal to each other. So the vertical side to the base should be equal to the vertical side to the base. So 10 over x. Uh, is equal to 16 over L. Whatever X is and whatever L is, that'll always be true. And so if we did find that 10 over X, can we also do that 6 over L minus X? Yeah. We could, okay. And the only thing I would say about that is that, is that it's very important that it's L minus X. It all relates back to things that you either know or want to know about. Mm -hmm. If we just call this Y, right, because that's, that's the, the side of the triangle that you want to yeah, use, we'll now it's like, well, why? What does it have to do with L and X? You should make that yeah. okay. explicit, right? It's implied, it's implicit, you should make it explicit. Say okay. that distance is that L minus X. So that's a very important part. Um, okay, so now we have an equation that relates the distance X, which we know something about, we know how fast it's changing, and then it relates it to L, which we want to know how fast L is changing. <coughs> so, uh, about multiply both sides by L, multiply both sides by X, and we have 10L equals 16X. We 
like to know how fast L is changing, so it would kill us to get L by itself. L equals uh, 16 over 10 times X. L equals 8 over 5 times uh, X. Okay, so we just got an L by itself. And now we want to know how fast L is changing, so what do we do with this equation? Derivative. Derivative. So DL dt equals 8 fifths dx dt. Plug in six trees per second, and we get 48 over five. 48 over five trees per second. The thing that you might find interesting is that the fact that this is 10 feet wound up not mattering at all. Apparently, it doesn't matter how far away he is from the lamp post. The rate at which his shadow, the tip of his shadow, is moving, is just eight fifths of however fast he walked. So a little bit bigger. What's that? The XTT was given. It was said he was walking away from the lamp post at a rate of six feet per second. Oh, okay. So that's where he got. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's where he got. Can we hear along the other thing? It's a little easier because it doesn't involve that subtraction. Okay, but here we go with this one. Uh, so similarly, we'll take 16 over L. But if we're using this triangle, we've got should be equal to 6 over L minus X. So multiply both sides by the denominators, and we'll get 6L. 6L equals 16 times L minus X. L equals 16L minus 16X. Divide by 6. Divide by 6. <laughs> okay, I've got an L here and an L here. I oh, yeah, yeah. Put them yeah. together. So I've got 10L equals 16X. So I subtract 6L, add 16X. Yeah. Like that. L equals 5 over, uh, what was the last one? Oh, 8, sorry. 8 over 5. X yeah. and. Yeah, so now we actually do care about how fast this is changing. Okay. Uh, so we've got to figure that out. Now we actually do want to call it something because we want to know how fast it's changing. But we're, we have more information. We know how fast this is changing. So we have more stuff we can plug in. So we do want to call this like a S maybe for the length of the shadow. Or something. Um, so write an equation relating S and L and X. All this stuff would work, right? S equals L minus X. I just put it, right? I made them equivalent. I'm just giving you a different name. S is L minus X. So DS DT equals DL DT minus DX DT. So DL DT is, did we do this? 8, 58, so uh, 48 over 5, right? 48 over 5. Six, which is 30 over 5, common denominator, 18 over 5 feet per second. 18 fifth feet per second. Okay. Okay. I know this is not the easiest problem to do, yeah. um, but seeing that, that the tip of the shadow is moving means this is changing. Um, well, it looks like it shouldn't have taken as long as it did. It's not not as elusive as we were making it like we did with the first try. Yes, jumping the gun making it slow down a little bit to get us to stop. Also, did you guys watch the video on this section? Because this exact problem was in here today. Um, so no. It's worth remembering that those things are there and checking them out. Okay? I'll keep it up. Not on me. I don't have to take this test.
along the graph such that dx dt is 2 centimeters per second. So sine of 3x is going to be this uh, shrunken down, like uh, horizontally squished sine wave. And there's a point on it, say maybe there, that it's moving, so it's not in any one place all the time. It's moving so that it's moving this direction at 2 uh, x units uh, per second. tick mark on the x-axis is worth a centimeter. So it's moving that way at a constant rate. Now its vertical uh, velocity is going to change depending on where it is. Here it's going to be pretty slow because from here to there there's not a lot of vertical change. But from here to here there's a lot of vertical change in both cases so it's going to be moving quickly. Okay? So you can imagine if I move this over uh, at a constant rate it's going to be going slowly and then fast and then slow. Well, how do we figure out how fast it's moving vertically versus how fast it's moving horizontally? Well, horizontal change we can call dx dt. Vertical change we can call dy dt. So if we want to find dy dt in relation to dx dt, we can just take the derivative with respect to t implicitly. So dy dt, that part's easy, equals take the derivative of this with respect to t, the chain rule. So it's the derivative of the sine cosine of 3x times the derivative of 3x with respect to t. 3 would be the derivative of 3x with respect to x. dx dt, we've got to use the chain rule again because we're taking the derivative with respect to t. So 3 dx dt. Be careful about this. It's not 3x dx dt. Because normally it would just be 3. If it was like 3x squared, would right. be like half. Now we have another inside. So in that case, that would be uh, 6x. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Is, do you have an agenda? There you go. And assign it if you have another. So now what would we do? Um, well, wait for the yeah, DXDT. We could plug in. Yeah. Yeah, we got the DXDT is 2. Yeah. We got x is, does it tell us? Pi over 11. Is, uh, oh, I'm at 40. Pi over 11. So cosine of 3 pi over 11 times 3 times 2. So little calculator. Set it in radian mode. Cosine of 3 pi over 11 times 3 times 2. the slope of the graph function the given value. So in, in calculus, we have this uh, unbreakable bond between slope and what? Derivative. Derivative. Derivative is this function that tells you what? The slope. The slope, right? Uh, and simple derivatives will tell you the slope if you know the value of x. Other ones where we do like implicit differentiation, you might have to know x and y. But if we know x for a simple derivative, uh, early derivatives, um, we just need to know the x value. So it, the first part of this problem, we definitely need to find the derivative. So let's just worry about that for a second and then look at where we are after that. So f prime, we know to take the derivative of this might be a little easier to look at it as negative 4 times x to the Now we can just use, instead of having to use the quotient rule, we can 
and I use the product tool. Mm -hmm. Really, just use the power of it. Or, yeah. Okay, because we don't have to treat this like a separate function, it's yeah. a constant multiple. So negative three times negative four is 12, x to the negative, or negative four. Very good, so you can pull that away from negative three to the four. So we could do 12 over x to the fourth. Okay, so there's the derivative. Let's see, right now what's it asking us? Find the slope of the graph of the function of the given value. Well, the derivative is a, uh, a function, a formula, whatever you want to call it, that tells you the slope or any values. That if you know all the values that go into this expression, then it will tell you the slope. And we do, we know that that is six. So 12 over six to the fourth. And number 13, um, ball is thrown from the top of a 210 foot building. So your initial distance from the ground is 210. So okay. that's this part. Um, is it the velocity, the initial velocity of negative 18 feet per second. So apparently this person has thrown it toward the ground at negative 18 feet per second. Negative 18 times t, negative 16 t squared. Okay. That's what those things, we're just filling in numbers there. So that first part. What's velocity after four seconds? Well, if I give you the position of the distance function, what, how do I figure out what velocity is? Take the derivative, right? Velocity is the rate of change of distance versus time. Right? And velo the, the, here's the distance function. If you take the derivative, we have the rate of change of distance versus velocity. Okay, so seven. S prime equals negative 32t minus 8. So the velocity after four seconds. So what? Four is it t? Is that, yeah. Okay. This is the velocity function. Velocity as a function of time. That's the same as the derivative of the position function. So okay. we plug in four. Negative eighteen minus four. Four times thirty-two is. Okay. So you're finding velocity of what? The ball at four seconds. Yes. The velocity of the ball at four seconds. Okay. What is the velocity after falling a hundred and ten feet? Now, here we have a velocity function. It's asking what the velocity is. Great. All you need to tell me is what time it happened, and I can plug in time, and I can tell you velocity. But here it's saying, what's the velocity after it falls 110 feet? Well, that's not time. No. I need time. I need to know what the time is to use my velocity function. Can we use other information of the problem to figure out what time that happens, that it has fallen 110? 110 feet is a, is a distance, it's a position, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we are at the beginning, 210 feet, right? 
we, they're, they're telling us, uh, they're asking a question about after it's fallen, after it has fallen 110 feet. So it's gone down 110 feet. The thing you need to remember about this function is it tells you how high the ball is. When you plug in all the information, it tells you how high the ball is. Okay. Okay. How high is the ball at this point? So it would be like 100. It would be 200. It would be 210 minus 110. Which is 100. No, which is 100. Sorry, 100. Not 200. Okay. 100. So then you would plug 100 as the distance is then, or? Yeah, so we would say that when, like, at some time, given this initial equation, we'll come out with 100 feet. It'll be at a height of 100 feet at some point. Okay. Okay? Uh, so when does that happen? <coughs> we solve for t. Uh, negative 16t squared minus 18t plus 210. Some value of t is going to come up to give us we found that by saying, well, it's fallen 110 feet, 210 minus 110 is the, is the height of 100 feet. So then we set it to zero, we solve quadratic so many times, <coughs> plus, sorry, minus 100, how this comes out to be, uh, 110, right? So it's kind of, it's, like, it's, it's like solving a problem where the building is 110 feet tall, Figure out when it gets to the ground. Shouldn't that be two ten? Uh, yeah, it should be two ten. Yeah. When you set it equal to zero, that's a lot of times like the height of zero. Well, this would be the same scenario. It it falls to one hundred feet from two hundred and ten, or it starts at one hundred and ten and falls to the ground. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like either way you think of it, it's going to the same thing. So how do we solve this equation? You write it. I mean, I'll leave this up for a couple of minutes, and you can write this down in your text. Okay. If you forgot, I don't want that to stop you. So anyway, we solve for t. Um, let's just say you do solve for t. You do the quadratic formula. This should not be difficult. You just plug in a, b, and c, a, b, and c. Figure out t. Plug t in there. You're gonna get two values of t. Only one of them is gonna make sense. Negative. You're gonna get a negative one. Because with the negative one is saying, um, well, obviously I have a po positive one. The negative one is saying, if, if it had a, a negative velocity of, of 18 feet per second initially, like the equation is kind of dumb and it thinks, oh, it must have been falling from up here at some point to, to get to that. And if you went backwards in time, then somewhere back here, it's also going to have fallen. should be a positive one and a negative one, which would be like if you went backwards in time in this scenario, it would also like it just kind of threw the ball up and then backwards in time. Anyway, only the positive one makes any sense because one of them is forward in time. Plug that guy in there. times another function, uh, the product rule. Um, okay, let's start taking the derivative. 4x to the third. 4x to the third. Guy, that's what we're working so on right here. One, one, one half, half, half minus the times the negative. 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 Times the negative.
times negative two because we're taking the derivative of this function. Yeah. Which is negative one. Oh. And then you leave it. Uh, I guess you're going to leave. Yep. Sure am. Okay. okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Can we get going?